first match of the day done and uh, a little bit of an upset there. A, a lot of stuff was going on. We were talking about a little bit of a secondary fight there with the Frigs as well. Uh, what, what happened there? I think what we saw was the, uh, the downfall of Hyperians mm. and why we have not seen them succeed very well so far, which is tracking disruptors. Mm. Uh, Initiative performed, I mean, amazingly mm. well in that. Their support frigates were assault frigate-based, uh, which gave them a, a, a good tank, good damage output, and utility mids, which they used for tracking disruptors. And, and perhaps they you know, guessed mm. that they were coming with the, with the third base team and, and loaded up on those because of it. Um, so what happened was that the assault frigates took down uh, the support um, on the uh, RVB side. And after that, just tracking disrupted the um, Hyperians, and three Hyperians were not able to hit the Oneros mm. at all. And match was over. Yeah, it seemed to me that uh, RVB's secondary squad got, some of them got a tackle on the initiative's Oneros, but then didn't do anything about it. They either didn't have the DPS or just kept one frigate on that, but yeah, they just didn't do anything. It didn't seem like they accomplished anything once the Navy Mega went down. It looked like they might be able to turn it around if they were able to get on top of the Oneros, which hypothetically they could have, but tracking disruptors played a big, pretty big role in the win for initiative. I think that one of the big problems with the Hyperion is it sort of uh, has the two primary things you think about when you think about a ship. It has damage and it has tank. It has a lot of active rep ability, like and it has the DPS of a ton of blasters. But the biggest problem is it has no utility of any sort. Mm. It only does those two things well, and it doesn't do much else particularly well. So for instance, the Vindicator has its web strength, Balgorns have newt strength, all these sort of little utility pieces that really come together to become a part of a team, rather than pushing all your utility to your support wing, and then letting your support wing just get crushed shooting the primary instead of taking out the other enemy support. But was it a bit of an uneven fight in that the RVB uh, support wing went after one of the bigger targets and the initiative support wing went after the support wing? Absolutely. I yeah. think this came down to target calling. Yeah. For whatever reason, RVB did not go for the logic trade. They instead yeah. decided to go for uh, taking off damage from the field. They um, scrambled the initiative on Eros off from the Navy Mecha, so it wasn't able to put reps on it um, early enough. Um, but they still chose to go and kill that damage off first, mm -hmm. while Initiative, on the other hand, went for the logic trade and got that trade done. Mm -hmm. Okay, they lost a, uh, a battleship for that trade, but um, with, with the support war won at that stage, it didn't matter. There was well, actually a critical piloting error really early in the match for Red versus Blue. Uh, right when they were trying to, they, when they almost killed the Vindy at the start of the match, uh, there were a bunch of dispersed damps, not on the Oneros, and those, like, just two or three more lock range damps potentially keeps that Oneros out or forces the Oneros so close to come in that they can, the Hyperions can just web it and kill it really early in the match. Like, they were damping like an Enyo that was also scrammed, so I imagine it was the same ship doing both. It's a little hard to call on that because if there's more than three damps on the Oneros already, it's not going to be damped down any mm. further than that. It's hard to tell. We couldn't see the distances as such, but you could be right with that. Well, okay, so also it's it's a great idea for the initiative to go after the Oneros early because you run into the issue where the Hyperians have such a strong local tank that if you don't take care of the auxiliary reps coming in from the Oneros that they're mm -hmm. not going to be able to break it. So even though, like you were saying, even though they did manage to get the Navy Mega down, at the point where their three Hyperians in support could not kill the, Navy, or the Vindicator, it was all over until they could kill the Oneros, which they never actually pulled off. Still, though, uh, you know, ended up with uh, with a bit of an upset. We all thought RVB would take this one, and, and, and they didn't. Uh, next, potential for another upset, if it happens, but, you know, Agony Empire uh, versus uh, Pandemic Legion. The bands are in. Agony Empire have banned the Balgorn and the Widow. Pandemic Legion have banned the Mollus and the Dominix. Almost Dominic's really, really standard, and Balgorn Widow, so they don't want to see PL's flagship, and they're worried about PL's, the PL ran an EC, uh, Widow ECM Tinker yes, last we year. Have a, we, we have a Widow-based team, though. We have um, our flagship as Vindicator. Oh, and okay. You can't ban that anyway, but uh, Balgorn, maybe they intend to once again perhaps bring out some um, <laughs> tight teams. Uh, all right, uh, Dolan, who do you think is going to win this one? Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, 
Pandemic Legion always have to lose sometimes, so I'm gonna go with Agony Empire. Oh. I'm going with PL, even though Agony has the potential because they are so unpredictable. I think this match, the smart money is going to be on Agony Empire. If you're on eBet.com, you will make a lot of money. I think this is the one match that PL can and will lose. Oh, maybe PL are betting on that as well. Uh, who knows? Uh, I'm going to put my money on PL. That's the smart money. 